It's been about a week since I made the first video on the transient generator. I've made some progress. In this video I'm going to go over a little bit about what's been done over the last week. So this was the original schematic that I showed in the first video. I'm planning on always using the rectified AC signal. I don't plan on using a zero cross. And the reason that I'm not using the zero cross is because the transient is always relative to ground. Another thing I decided to do was use a 6801 for the microcontroller. This is a fairly old part from early 80s. It has a 2K of ROM and 128 bytes of RAM. There was no reason for this decision other than I thought it would be interesting to pull out some of these old tools. So these are some of the tools. This is the original manual for the 6801. This is my programmer for it. This is homemade. You can see the ZIF socket here. The way this works is it's got a dual ported memory. There's a gal up here just for some logic and a, this is just a latch and a prom. This prom contains the program that I use to actually program this device. So you program up this dual ported RAM from an external programmer and this emulates a 2716 and then you hit the reset switch and this device will self program from the memory in the dual port and the LCD here gives us the status. Back when we used these uh, there was a HP 64000 workstation that you used to develop them. There was also the Exermax and the Exerciser from Motorola. Those were quite unreliable. I chose to make my own. This is a homemade in-circuit emulator. You just have a uh, power connection on the back. This plugs into your target device. These two probes are a trigger output for your oscilloscope. This is your serial port. It allows you to do single step. You can have an infinite number of breakpoints. It's all done in hardware. Uh, it runs real time. It's an old UV eraser. You can see my 6801's in there. looking at the transient generator the way it sits you can see in the back here this is the King's connector this would be the high voltage output that's what the instrument looks like from the front is your menu selection this will turn on the high voltage and this is for your low voltage the key turns it on See the top line here is the time the transient generator has been active. The next is the bias voltage and the bias current. This is the AC plus DC waveform. The next is the capacitor bank charge. This is in KV. And the number of cycles. So currently the Brahman is connected to the output of the generator. So if we select this button here, this will turn on the output. You can see our DC voltage here. 
This is reading AC plus DC, so let's just go ahead and select that. So roughly 270 volts. We just select the button again and it'll disable the bias. So I've got a light bulb here. We'll go ahead and hook this across to our resistor. So these light bulbs are only ready to run on 120. It'll survive the 200 volts. So let's go ahead and turn on the output again. You can see now we're pulling a little bit of current. It's reading about 230 volts. Two hundred thirty-three at about three hundred and seven milliamps. And we just select the button again. We'll turn it back off. So here I've got the Bryman just set in current mode. It's basically in series with our light bulb and our resistor. We'll go ahead and turn our load back on. And we can see the Bryman is reading roughly 329 and 315 here. So it's about 15 milliamps off. All these are adjustable. So we can go into the menu here. See 330 and 329.6. And select this. Turn it back off. Again, I don't have any of the high voltage circuitry installed, but I have a pod attached. Uh, so if we increase the voltage here, this is telling you. The beep tells you that you've hit the threshold. So normally if I turn this on here, you can see the cycle count goes to 5. I can increment that if I want, or deck. So as the voltage here were to rise, you can see our cycle count goes down. It triggers the output. tells you that it's completed and that will go ahead and turn off the output. So the software is basically completed. Next step is really to get the high voltage circuitry installed.